Here is a weird story about animal trials in history. Periods and places where animals has been sentenced in court for criminal acts. The trials of the pigs of Savigny, France in the Middle Ages, the year 1266, is a notable historical event where animals, specifically pigs, were subjected to a formal judicial trial. This peculiar episode reflects the unique legal practices of the time. In medieval Europe, it was not uncommon for animals to be held legally responsible for their actions and to be tried in court, similar to humans. These trials often followed legal procedures comparable to those used in human trials, including the appointment of a lawyer for the defendant animal. The case in Savigny, France is one of the most well-documented instances of such an animal trial. The pigs in question were accused of attacking and killing a child. As bizarre as it may seem today, this trial was conducted with seriousness, and the animals were treated as if they were capable of moral and legal responsibilities. The outcome, typically, was not favorable for the animals. This incident is often cited as an example of the anthropomorphic approach to law and justice during medieval times. It also highlights the evolving perception of legal responsibility and the relationship between humans and animals. Over time, such practices were phased out as legal systems evolved, and the understanding of animal behavior and cognition developed. A couple of dogs was sentenced during the Salem witch trials that occurred in colonial Massachusetts in the late 17th century. These trials are notorious for their extreme paranoia and the tragic consequences of mass hysteria, where accusations of witchcraft led to the execution of 20 people and two dogs. In the context of these trials, animals were sometimes believed to be familiars or companions to witches, supposedly given to them by the devil to aid in their nefarious deeds. The belief was that these familiars, often pets or common animals, assisted witches in their practice of magic. In the superstitious climate of the time, even animals could be suspected of witchcraft or seen as being under a witch's spell. The two dogs in Salem was executed because it was believed to be part of the witchcraft activities. It was thought to be either a familiar of a witch or bewitched itself. The behavior, perhaps unusual or misunderstood, led to its association with the supernatural and the witch trials. It's a stark reminder of the feverish and irrational mindset that dominated during the Salem witch trials, where not only humans but even animals could fall victim to the hysteria and fear that gripped the community. This incident is often cited as an example of the extremities of the witch trials and the pervasive fear of witchcraft that could extend even to animals, further illustrating the profound social and psychological impacts of the Salem witch trials on the community. Another trial that was made against a rooster in Basel is a peculiar and notable case in the annals of animal trials in medieval Europe. This trial took place in the city of Basel, Switzerland, in the 1470s. The rooster was put on trial for the unnatural act of laying an egg, which was considered an ominous sign and associated with dark magic and witchcraft. In those times, there was a prevalent belief in a creature known as the basilisk, a mythical serpent king said to hatch from a yokeless egg laid by a rooster. The basilisk was feared for its lethal powers, and its gaze alone was believed to bring death. Consequently, when the rooster in Basil was reported to have laid an egg, alarm spread among the populace, as it was feared that the egg could hatch into a basilisk. The authorities decided to put the rooster on trial, treating the case with the same seriousness as human trials. The charges against the rooster were based on the assumption that its actions were an affront to natural order and could be seen as linked to the devil and witchcraft. The trial proceedings reflected the superstitions and religious beliefs of the time, where natural anomalies were often interpreted as signs of evil or witchcraft. Ultimately, the rooster was found guilty and, along with the egg it had supposedly laid, was burned at the stake as a measure to ward off evil and protect the community. According to local folklore, a monkey was hanged in Hartlepool, England. During the Napoleonic Wars, a French ship was wrecked in a storm off the coast of Hartlepool. The only survivor from the ship was a monkey, allegedly dressed in a French army uniform to provide amusement for the crew. 
On finding the monkey on the beach, some locals decided to hold an impromptu trial. Since the monkey was unable to answer their questions and because they had seen neither a monkey nor a Frenchman before, they concluded that the monkey must be a French spy. Being found guilty, the animal was sentenced to death and was hanged on the beach. The colloquial name for the resident people of Hartlepool is Monkey Hanger. A case that turned out better for the animal was the Jacques Ferrand case. Jacques Ferrand was a Frenchman who was tried and hanged in 1750 for copulation with a Jenny, female donkey. The trial took place in the commune of Vanve, and Ferrand was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. In cases such as these, it was usual that the animal would also be sentenced to death, but in this case the she-ass was acquitted. The court decided that the animal was a victim and had not participated of her own free will. A document, dated 19th of September 1750, was submitted to the court on behalf of the she-ass that attested to the virtuous nature of the animal. Signed by the parish priest and other principal residents of the commune, it proclaimed that they were willing to bear witness that she is in word and deed and in all her habits of life a most honest creature. In the 19th century, two dogs was punished without a court in San Francisco. Bummer and Lazarus were two stray dogs who became local celebrities in San Francisco during the 1860s. Their story is a heartwarming tale of canine friendship and survival, and they are remembered as symbols of the city's early days. Bummer was a black and white Newfoundland mix, known for his gentle nature. He first gained local fame as a stray when he started hanging around the saloons and establishments of Montgomery Street, particularly Frederick Martin's saloon. Bummer was named for his habit of bumming food off the patrons. Despite being a stray, he was well liked for his friendly demeanor and was often fed by local business owners and residents. Lazarus, another stray, entered the scene a bit later. He was in a poor state, injured and struggling to survive. Bummer took Lazarus under his wing, sharing food and providing companionship. The two dogs quickly became inseparable, and their story captured the hearts of San Franciscans. Lazarus's health improved with Bummer's help, and the two became known for their loyalty to each other. Their fame grew, and they were often featured in local newspapers. They were known to roam the streets together, and their adventures and escapades were a popular topic of discussion among the city's residents. The dogs were so well regarded that they were given a special exemption from the city's stray dog laws. Tragically, Lazarus died after being kicked by a policeman in 1863. Bummer was reported to have mourned his friend's death deeply. When Bummer passed away in 1865, his death was also mourned by the city and he was given a prominent obituary in the local newspapers. Bummer and Lazarus are remembered as symbols of San Francisco's spirit in the 19th century. They exemplified resilience, companionship, and the city's unusual tolerance for the pair of lovable strays. Their story is often celebrated in local lore and art, symbolizing the unique character of San Francisco during that era. The story of Mary the Elephant often referred to as Murderous Mary, is a tragic and dark chapter in American history, highlighting the harsh treatment of circus animals in the early 20th century. This incident occurred in September 1916 in the small town of Irwin, Tennessee. Mary was a five-ton Asian elephant who performed in a traveling circus known as Sparks World Famous Shows. The incident that led to Mary's tragic fate began during a parade through the streets of Kingsport, Tennessee. Mary was being ridden by a trainer named Red Eldridge, who was hired just the day before and had no experience in handling elephants. Eldridge reportedly prodded Mary behind the ear with a hook after she reached down to nibble on a watermelon rind. This action provoked Mary, and in a moment of apparent agitation or pain, she grabbed Eldridge with her trunk, threw him to the ground, and stepped on his head, causing fatal injuries. The death of Eldridge incited a public outcry, with calls for the elephant to be punished. The circus owner, fearful of public backlash and the potential impact on his business, decided that Mary should be executed. The initial attempts to kill her were both cruel and ineffective, 
leading to the decision to publicly hang the elephant. The execution was carried out the next day in the nearby town of Irwin. A crowd of several thousand people, including many children, gathered to witness the event. Mary was hung using a chain around her neck and a rail car mounted industrial crane. The first attempt failed as the chain snapped, causing Mary to fall and break her hip. The second attempt was successful and Mary was left hanging for half an hour before her body was buried. The story of Mary the Elephant is often cited as a stark example of the mistreatment of circus animals and the lack of understanding of animal behavior at the time. It also reflects the public's thirst for spectacle and retribution without due consideration for the welfare of animals. Mary's death remains a poignant reminder of the need for humane treatment of all creatures. A much later case was about Katya the bear. She was a female brown bear native to Kazakhstan who was imprisoned in 2004 after being found guilty of mauling two people in separate incidents. Katya was held in the Arkalik prison in Kostanai. The bear was released from imprisonment and allowed to congregate with other bears after serving a 15-year sentence. Handlers report Katya socializing well with other bears after her long imprisonment. Thanks for watching.